Hi, I'm Colin Preston. I'm a retired film and video archivist from CBC, and I've also been a participant in all of the Vancouver area home movie days that began in 2004. We're here to give you a virtual experience of the home movie day in the hopes that it'll help you with the film and video that you may have found around your home and are trying to decide what to do with it. Let's get started. There's one primary rule of film preservation, and that is keep your original. Uh, think of all of the generations in the 70s and 80s that people transferred their uh, home movies to DVD and VHS tape, and the supplier or the families themselves tossed that original. What a shame. Rule number two of film preservation store them in a good place. Where did you get them? Maybe in the attic? Maybe in the basement? Well, film is like us. It likes to live in a comfortable, in the between, just right environment. Not too hot, not too cold, particularly not in a place like the attic where temperatures vary considerably from season to season. So you've sought out a place that your film or your video might want to live that would be comfortable not too hot, not too moist, uh, not too cold. Uh, but there's uh, further things that you have to look into, and that is how should they be stored when they're there? Uh, one of the things that we often see are people thinking, I want to protect it from dust and moisture. These are good intentions. So they put it in a Ziploc bag. That's a terrible intention because it will begin to cook the acetic acid which that will form and catalyze within a film emulsion will then begin to uh, what's called vinegar syndrome and if you've ever opened up a can that smells like a salad bar you know what I'm talking about and that will destroy the film much more quickly than for virtually anything else. Uh, film can stand being submerged in water not that you'd want to do it but the acetic uh, vinegar syndrome will destroy it ultimately. And videotape they too like it even temperature, not moist, not too dry for static electricity, and rather than you might see them stacked up on your coffee table, they like it vertical. And the other thing to bear in mind that you don't have to worry about with film, but with videotape, is that uh, electricity, uh, magnetism of motors, can uh, erase things partially. So don't put it in a place where the vacuum may run by or there's some other source of electricity that could uh, it negatively affect your tape. So we've identified our films or videos and we've got a good place to store them. What happens now? Well, if we're at a home movie day, uh, you'd be dealing with a professional and we'd appraise it. And we'd say then, if we, once we'd uh, verified the condition, what would you like to do with it? And in many cases, people would say, well, I'd like to look at it now. I have never seen these. And that's always been a fantastic experience. But we're in a virtual world now. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do a little bit of inspection if you're up to it. The most important watchword for inspection of film is cleanliness. You want to have a clean work area, clean hands, cotton gloves if possible. You want to start looking and seeing if the, if the beginning of a piece of roll of film, if the glue splice is in good shape, does the film seem supple or does it seem brittle? Uh, seems more to the latter, uh, you'll want to set it aside and maybe involve some other people who've got experience with this. If it is supple, don't be tempted to put it in a projector yet, if there happens to be one in your home. Uh, your film may have shrunk, the sprockets may be, da holes may be damaged, and you don't want that feed mechanism to begin eating up your film. There is an alternative to the projector, and that is a hand-cranked uh, film previewer, very much like this one for, this happens to be for eight millimeter film, but rather than putting it through a mechanical uh, advance, you're doing it yourself with cranks. And that will that'll help you, again, look through, inspect, see if there's damage, begin to get a little bit of an idea of what might be on this roll of film. Alternatively, if you have someone involved in photography, even putting a piece of film laying it flat on a clean light table will begin to give you some idea at the head of the film what might or might be on it, whether it's color, whether it's black and white, is it something else?
Well, this is a preliminary appraisal. You've done some triage and know that the film now is in fairly decent shape. You'd like to get it to the place where you can transfer it, digitize it, and be able to access it while you can set the original aside once it's been processed, and it will stay there as your family artifact. You can put into a search engine, Film Transfer North Vancouver, Video Transfer North Vancouver, that's a hyper-local way to do it, uh, or any jurisdiction that you'd like. And you'll get a number of firms uh, in, the, in the vicinity that do this. A transfer facility will clean and inspect your film or films. Uh, they will transfer them to a digital file or a DVD for those that are still doing that. And uh, you'll have then a return of your original artifact, which will be yours to preserve for future days. There will perhaps be other, no, I'm sure there will be other generations of transfer that will give even more uh, clarity. But for now, you'll be able to easily handle and uh, view and share the family memories that you have in those films. A highlight of Home Movie Day, which you might like to adapt for your own use, is once you've got your digital file back from the transfer house, screen it for family or friends, uh, those and loved ones, and make an audio recording or make some annotations, some notes of people's comments. People will say, oh, that's Uncle Phil, or that's you know Aunt Ida, whatever it may be. Uh, there's no time like the present for, to record those memories and impressions. Uh, that makes it a much more valuable artifact and family memory later on as it passes to generations. We've said how important it is to keep your original material, that original film or tape, but in many cases it's uh, not feasible for people to have the storage space or the willingness to do so. What happens then? Well, the first thing you can always do is talk to other family members. Perhaps one of them would be willing to uh, take on the responsibility of uh, archiving, keeping these things for future generations. But if not, one of the best things that's happened in public archives in the last uh, little while of history is that they have begun to realize the importance of home movies, amateur film, as a reflection of their community uh, and their interests. And if their collection mandate says so, they will gladly take these on. But for all intents and purposes, what you want to do is talk to those archives and see if they are of interest. They may not be directly uh, willing to take them on, but they certainly would be willing to give you a referral. I urge you to do so. I hope you have happy viewing and uh, look forward to the day when we will be able to resume real in-person home movies and have those delightful screenings. And thanks to the North Vancouver Museum and Archives for this opportunity to share a home movie day experience with you.